Hey, it's Cameron. Just wanted to do a quick uh, video on the Webasto Dual Top 6. Uh, this is, should be about the same as the 6 and the 7 and the 8. Um, they're pretty much the same. There's some minor differences, but you should be able to be able to use this video to get them going. The the instructions are all it's all there how to install them in the instructions. They just leave a lot to the imagination. Um, so I thought I'd throw something together really quick just to show you. It's actually a lot simpler than you think. Uh, first off, you got to get the unit mounted in the vehicle. That involves drilling a hole through the floor. Uh, it tells you the size of the hole you need. That's for the exhaust. Um, the unit can be installed outside. It is uh, waterproof and weatherproof and can be mounted under the vehicle. Uh, we elected to put it inside the vehicle because I just couldn't find anywhere that I really liked under the vehicle. Um, I did buy the plate here. This is an optional uh, indoor plate, so I put that in there. It's got some uh, threaded studs that come up and then these little brackets mount onto them. Uh, if you don't know how these work, these little grooves right here, uh, they'll, the unit comes with um, some bolts that have these hammer head looking tops on them. Those kind of go in sidewards and then you twist them and then you have a locked bolt. The bolt kind of locks in there and then you can tighten them down. Uh, I did use some locking nuts and used some of my own hardware. Uh, one of the problems with the Wubastos you'll find is you get a box with about 20 bags in it. Um, the nuts and bolts are all in these different bags for the different parts of the install. So I would take the time and kind of spread them out and see what you got. Open up each bag carefully, make sure you, you know where what goes where. Um, I was kind of doing it one at a time and that definitely was not efficient. Uh, so. The unit itself, um, nothing on the sides, tops. The bottom has the exhaust port and the drain. So the drain is really nothing special. It just opens up and water just comes out of the bottom. So you do need about a two or three inch hole in the bottom of the vehicle, through the vehicle for that to, to come. They, I think they, they give you some tolerances on how close the edge of the vehicle is to the exhaust pipe. <clears throat> um, on the back, you've got See if we got enough light here. We've got several little things going on in the back. The back here is the uh, the important part. So you've got these two big openings, one here, one here, and then there's actually one down underneath. It's kind of hard to see it right down here. So this is the cabin air. This is what gets blown. So it picks up this air, heats it up, and pushes it out into the cabin. Uh, this one here is actually just a cooling unit for the boiler. So as that thing heats up, it's got to provide some cooling ability so it doesn't overheat. So that's all that is. The one underneath here, um, this guy right down here, that's the air that actually gets burnt. Uh, so I got to get the hose ran on that. I'm probably just going to run it internal for now. Um, since my exhaust comes straight underneath the vehicle, I don't want to be sucking in exhaust for combustion air. Uh, and then lastly right here, it's kind of hard to see, this is the diesel line. This unit does tie into your vehicle's diesel tank. It has a little pump and then it just pumps the pumps from the diesel tank, which is one of the benefits of this unit. Uh, since it's pumping right off your diesel tank, you don't have to have additional fuel lines or worry about fumes or anything in there. So um, one of the good things. Uh, additionally, here on the back, you have two, two water lines. One's uh, hot, cold water in and one's hot water out. You can see they're clearly labeled. Sorry, the, the noise of the fan's on. It may be a little loud. Uh, the unit does get a little loud, so hopefully this isn't too annoying. But the, the blue air all in is your cold water in, and then the red is your hot water out. Very easy to understand. Uh, I believe it's 3 8 inch diameter tubing onto a barbed little uh, nipple that you put on. So... Uh, one problem I did have is uh, I left the pump on for a couple hours unattended and I came back and I did have a geyser in here. Uh, I was leaking right out of here out of a pinhole. So um, make sure you have good hose and make sure you get them on tight. And additionally, my water pump pumps up to about 55 PSI. Uh, so I did put in a pressure reducing valve right over here. Uh, I'll be able to control that down to about the 35 that Wabasto recommends. In the front of the unit here, we have two holes um, for two lines out. Those are three inch lines. I just went down to the local hardware store and bought some uh, some duct work, some three inch duct, round duct. Uh, taped them on with duct tape and 
they'll uh, they'll go to two different parts in the cabin. Let's see right here. I am going to insulate them. I uh, had the unit running the other night to keep me warm while I was doing some work. Puts out a lot of heat and those pipes do get pretty hot. So I'm going to insulate that and put them in a box. Now, on the control side of things, you have a you have a sensor. So this is this tells the unit how hot, warm and cold it is in here. Uh, this is all temporarily mounted until I get everything finished and then get some wall paneling on. Then we'll go official. Let me turn the video here. So this is your controller. Hold on there. Get in position. Um, you've got basically you've got three modes. You've got the draining mode, summer mode, and winter mode. This main dial tells you which which one you're in. So if I switch over to off, you see all the lights go off. Uh, the unit will take a minute to go off. So if you turn it off, it kind of goes through a shutdown sequence, is what I've discovered. Um, so and it will get pretty loud here in a second. Uh, in the summer mode, it only heats water. So that's right up there. You can get up to 40 degrees Celsius or 70 degrees Celsius. In winter mode, you can do air only, air and water, or frost mode. So frost mode just keeps the unit from freezing while you're either traveling or stationary. Um, the only other thing is the boiler drain. You actually have to turn it and hold it. It's spring loaded. So I'm holding that open. It should be draining my boiler right now. I can hear water dripping back there, so it's working. Turn that off. It's spring loaded. I let go. Um, let's see. Down here you have a light, this green light right here. This light uh, will blink. If it's solid green, all's good. Uh, it'll blink a certain number of codes, so like a red light, three. You go look in the manual they have, and it'll tell you what three red blinks mean. Um, pretty nice little way of troubleshooting. Like I said, it does take a minute to start up and shut down. There is a startup shutdown process, so it doesn't just fire right up like a f normal furnace would or forced air heater. Uh, but it kind of builds up and gets louder and louder as you go. Let's go look at the pump now. So we've come to the front of the vehicle. This is right next to the diesel tank. That's the little pump that installs. Uh, instructions made it sound like I could just tap into a rubber hose, rubber, rubber diesel line, put a T in it and run it over here. Uh, it certainly wasn't that easy. Um, I was having the Mercedes dealer do some work on this and they had the diesel tank down. So they went ahead and threw this line in that's coming from the tank. Uh, it wasn't something I felt comfortable with doing. Um, since you have to tap into multiple, uh, or you, there's multiple lines up in there and you don't want to tap into the wrong one. So they went ahead and did it. Uh, while I had the work being done on the other stuff, they basically charged me 80 bucks, which doesn't seem bad at all. So um, the pump is made up of uh, an inline. Let's see if I can get some. This line here brings it from my tank. Here's the pump. Uh, that colorful, this is some wiring up here, so that's the wiring harness, comes from the controller we were just looking at. And then the diesel line, that thing runs all the way to the back. I just kind of fished it around, found good places for it to go. Along with installing the controls, I did have to put in this little fuse block. Uh, the instructions say not to put it in with, um, into your main, main fuse um, box. So they do come with this little box. You have to build it. It's a little bit of annoying. Just follow the directions. Look at the diagrams close and you'll get it put together. Uh, you've got a 215s and a 5 uh, for the pump, the controls, and then the, the blowers. Um, it says not to try to add any additional switching on it. I did want to tie it into a switch so I could shut the whole unit off at once. But they say don't do that. Just use the off switch on the controller. So the last thing I wanted to show really quick was the exhaust system. Uh, it's still not done down here, got a little more work to do, but it does come with a little muffler. Um, goes up, that's where I penetrated. The only thing I uh, warn you about here is when you drill through the floor, uh, it's a pretty big opening they want to do. I, I just used a, a jigsaw and cut through it. Um, you do expose some of the wood, so I did put some caulk up in there and sealed all the wood and everything. Uh, additionally, you got to watch where you run the diesel line because the, the muffler's right there, so I do need to do some better tacking of this. So um, that's the whole Wibos.
Oh, sorry, I got cut off on the video, having to do a second video here. Uh, that's the whole unit. If you have any questions, drop them in the um, inside the comments. I'll be glad to answer. Uh, it was a pretty daunting task when I first started. Now that I'm done, it's actually pretty easy. It's a pretty nice little unit, easy to use. You get hot air and hot water out of one little unit that draws from your diesel tank. Um, it's bigger than I thought it was, but it's still pretty compact. Uh, it is pretty loud, so I am building this little box around it. Um, kind of hard to see. That's some fire coating on the back. I don't really think I need it because the box is more for muffling the sound. But I figured might as well just put some fire proofing on there just in case. The unit is completely separated from the the forced air side and the, the combustion side. So you'll never have any problems, but I'm just doing it for the heck of it. So um, we'll do a review and let you know how we uh, like it. So far, just using it out here in the van while I've been working on it, it's been pretty nice. Uh, temperatures have been dropping down to about 29 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, we live here in Utah in the United States, so it does get a little chilly and I fire it up and it heats the van up pretty quick. So we'll give a better review later, but for now, that's how you go ahead and install it. It's not as bad as you think. Just look at each of the instructions and read them. Sometimes they're a little confusing, but if you read them and just uh, follow the kind of some of the guidelines I've given, you'll be all right. Thanks.